can we use sound to make immersion deeper? Yes. Yes. <laughs> and yes. Okay. So, of course, no, the answer is no, it's finished. Okay. Hello. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We have other talk. Thank you. You people are amazing. <coughs> the answer is a big yes. But how can we do that? Okay. Today, I will show some techniques. And maybe if we have time, we will try to, to make something practical. Um, we will see. Okay, so the idea is, uh, but how can we do that? Uh, what listening is for you? Uh, what hearing is for you? Okay, yesterday we saw something similar in another conference about sound design. So if you were there, don't spoil the question to the other. But <laughs> we can start with giving some definition. Okay, because in order to um, before I speak to sound, we need to speak about listening because we don't listen too much every day. How our everyday life is very, very bad uh, for listening. Um, how our uh, houses, how our streets are not very well conceived from a hearing point of view. Okay, so we are, um, we are lost a lot of capacity, a lot of ability that we had when we were real animal. Now we are, we are sort of fake animal pretending to be human, so we, we lost our capacity of being very, very effective in that, so we need to, to recover, okay? Because usually when we, when we talk about listening, we talk about music, okay? It's very important, we love music, we, can, we make music, we can't, of course, live without music. There is no population that has no music or for traditional music, it's, it's a need, okay? But listening is not only the music because, of course, the music is the moment in which musicians, society, everyone around us say, you should listen, okay? You have to listen because there is music. But there are sound always already uh, around us. We make sound and, and so trying to, 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 to think about, about listening. So. <clears throat> Can we define hearing or listening? Help me. What do you think is hearing? Noticing all the small sounds. Okay. Do you agree? Yes? No? Okay. What is listening? When you carefully hear a sound. Okay. Or other definitions? Actively hearing. <laughs> Is a, is, a, is a possible definition. So hearing is the, is the, the technical uh, ability to receive sound. Okay? Even a machine can hear. But listening is something linked to our uh, psychology, our culture, our ability. And listening is an ability. Hearing is, is more a medical thing. You hear well or not, but there is not, nothing linked to um, message on aesthetics on something like that. Okay? Machine cannot listening, can just hearing, but we can listen. So we need to work on, on listening, of course, in order to, to do our thing. And this is, <coughs> uh, listening is extract meaning from sound, is make connections, is not a mechanical act. So as we, I said before, why sound and not music? Okay, I use in, in the title of this talk the term sound and not music, okay? Because sound is more comprehensive and of course we know that more and more LARP are using music to enhance uh, participation or, I don't know, um, uh, mood or person, character, personality and stuff like that. But we are not so good at sound, at dealing with sound as LARP designer and player, okay? Because we are not good at that in everyday life. So <laughs> this problem reflects on LARP, on our LARP activity, okay? So this is, this is the different, the different. Sound, we can use sound as raw material, okay? Music is part of sound, but sound is a bigger category in which we can put a lot of things that affect us. And music is evident. <clears throat> we know that that song will work on that, on, on us in that way, but maybe uh, we don't know how sound works. Okay, sound plays us in space and time. We will do example, and now it's a little bit of theory. Please be patient because we, I need to try to build a common ground before going more into detail, the detail. Okay, so it's not organized as in a song or music, but 
sound plays us in space and time. Why? Because uh, in space is evident. Sound is a spherical thing that we are just draw into the middle. But sound can space us in time too. A little example. Okay, what's the sound? It's a train. What kind of train? Okay, so it reminds you something. Do you have an image in your mind? Yeah, or? Westerns. What? Westerns. Okay, yes, western, of course. So it's not a modern train. And we, we find out only by sound. So sound put this image in time, okay? So this was an example, another one. Okay, what it was? School bell. Mm. School bell or? Yeah, or? It really depends on our culture. It's a silly example, but in Italy it's a school bell. But an old one, because now they change the school bell. I was shocked by my students because I play that. They say, oh, and they said, no, there is no more. It's a more um, artificial sound. So it put us in space. It remind us to our school days or fire alarm, and it, it, it gives information and even emotion, because as a student, this sound is, oh, cool, mm -hmm. school is over. Now we are no more in school, I'm not so happy to hear in that, it's just another sound, okay? So it reminds us how uh, um, uh, even emotional, emotional things. And any sound can do that. My voice is very loud today, so you can easily imagine that yesterday I was shouting like, just like you, and this, all this information is only by sound. So this is another example. Okay, this is because sound works on us in many ways, physically, psychologically, and socially, okay? Of course, physically, because sound, this is, a medical thing, um, alterate how our blood pressure, produ production of different substances in our body, we, it, this is real. Uh, psychologically, because we feel uh, sensation, just as in the example, and socially, because we act, in, uh, we react to the music and to sound in different way, uh, according to different social moment, okay? This is the reason why we can't dance in a theater and we, can, we don't stay like that in, in, on the dance floor, okay? It's because the music, but, it, but it's also because the social constraints that are always active. So this is, this is very important, and every one of these three uh, aspects is linked to the other in a non-hierarchical way, okay? It's not this is more important, that, that, that. No, they all together, collaborate to our sound experience as a total um, uh, <coughs> event, okay? So, let's go to the practical part, okay? <laughs> Enough to the theory, it's very early in the morning, so how we can use it in LARP in very practical way? Can I put sound element in um, my LARP, okay? Yes, I have some example on that. Okay. The first example that we can use is that sound is very, very <coughs> linked to our memories and to our very animal reaction, okay? So, some example. This is very known, I will use that, but it's, it's a, a uh, is an example that it's very useful to do, so I will do it. Okay. Maybe you know that. This is called the cocktail effect. It means that even the sound is louder than my voice, you can still hear me because I hope you are interested in what I'm saying, okay? So this is, for a physical point of view, this is a nonsense because you are more 
attentive to this sound, that, that party sound, but it is what it is, okay? Why this little example? Because it's, it's, as a, it's, um, it has a, a very cool name, it's called the cocktail effect. And so we, we, this example can raise our, our awareness about when you want that sound, you are very good at extract it, okay? So we can use that for, um, since uh, if character won't really hear that sound, we, you can cover it and discover it is, is fun and can be used in your art. Other example, audio logo, okay? We are very good at having memory in sound, okay? Just a little example of one second and I'm sure you will recognize what it is. <laughs> okay? Is what it is? Okay, the old one. We're listening for just for one second. Another one. Okay, the most played tune in, uh, I don't know, in 2000 something. Yeah, not only a phone, a Nokia phone. Okay, so this is an answer of memory. Let's do the same with music. <laughs> <laughs> one note. Okay, one second. Another one. Okay, so we are very good at. Is that uh, in this one second we don't we not only have the reference to the music and the sound, but even a moment in history, a place, because we know that this is not a recent uh, a song, it's not from the 30s, so we can put it in in a historical period, and a lot of uh, emotion are linked to that because how I think go they wanna east, so all of a sudden they want to dance, so even. Emotion, not only information, can be enhanced by, by that. Okay, I have one more audio logo. <laughs> the lion in the circle, tran, tran, tran. it's not any drum, it's that drum. No? MGM, yeah, yeah, sorry. <laughs> and so on, okay? So we can use that to, but how we can use that to describe a character, okay? Um, a very famous German composer, Richard Wagner, used music to, um, it was maybe the first LARPer composer in history, because he used music to underline character. You know, the leitmotiv is a particular, um, uh, Melody played when this character comes into the scene. An example. <coughs> okay. Let's pretend I am the character step into the scene. Okay? I will say the same phrase, very silly one. Hi, everyone but you can see how music can change this example. Hi everyone. Hi everyone. Okay. Say, it's, it's a very silly example, but it's the same, um, the same line. It changed a lot by, by music and sound. So to describe a character, this is the first question. Of course, it's very useful for musical LARP, okay? A lot of LARP now are uh, more like musical and uh, cabaret and something like that, so we can use that. Uh, how would you make or Practically, would that character bring a boombox on his shoulder? Or okay. How do you do that? Okay. Unless it's a very steel the, 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 the last part of the... Um, in, 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 in the last part of the, um, the presentation, I will go into that, but I can go it now. Sound is very hard to... In, in some ways, very, it's very... very hard, practically, because 
you need to deal with space. Okay, so <clears throat> if you need that music for that character, in that way you need to, to know where this character will be presented. So you, you need to design a special scene, in this case, but we can do different things. And you can, use hi you can hide uh, speakers all over the, the, the room. It's very nice that we add a lot of wireless technology now. Before it was very hard. You can use, uh, I don't know, Bluetooth things or uh, there is a lot of system that you can easily find to, to do that. And another, uh, or, or you can set up a room with a particular soundscape in it and you know that some scene will go, will, will, will happen in that room, okay? Another possibility is talk in explicit way. Because sound is about emotion, but it's also about information, okay? So you can, you can uh, give information, let the players um, uh, have like little sound puzzle to, to um, collect sound and have information. In one lab we organized, we use that, it was The Last Gardener. So it was a sort of uh, spy story and we Mm, we spy our character for like uh, two weeks in their normal life, okay? So we recorded their phone call, uh, their phone call. We recorded their conversation in the bar because they don't know the NPC. So we were very hardly stalking people, but no one was harmed. It was just spying them. And of course, after that, we give to the player all the recording from their last week. And they were just, oh. Okay, and this, only by sound, we can make them very scary and very deep to be immersed in this spy story, okay? There is a lot of software or app you can find for free to recording phone call. So we, we make fake calls to character, like we are the electricity company, can you say your name? Blah, blah, blah. And they provide the information and we use this information both for having uh, giving this flavor of um, being uh, stalked, but also information because the bad guy of the story was him, <laughs> Daniele. Yeah, 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 it was you. Um, and he talked with these people only by Skype call. So the, the big enemy was only sound. It was impossible to see him, okay? And of course, the, uh, this had a lot of mystery. And when in the last scene, Daniele came up, it was like seeing God, you know, because God is sound, is word, and you can imagine whatever you want. And after that, they discovered that it was a man. We use a masked voice, you know, the software that can make your voice very, very low. And it was impossible for them to, to find out who was the guy, and it was him. So we, we provide a, a lot of, um, of information and sound game. We, key, we, we, we cut some phrases that were important to the investigation and they need to find this sound puzzle and collect them, okay? And it was most interesting that is very common in LARP, you have to put together a piece of paper, no? To have the full treasure map. Now, we, in this case, we, we do that with sound and it was very new for the player and was a very good uh, uh, solution. Another case is that, okay? We play this LARP in Sweden, okay? But it was not an international LARP. We, <laughs> we take our Italian players and go to Sweden to play. Why? Because Sweden, is, for us, is very far, very quiet. For a, um, music, for a sound point of view, Italy is just like hell. Ah, everybody's screaming everywhere and you are a car. And we want a very intimate story. It was very hard to do it <laughs> in Italy. So for us, the cliche, the most uh, quiet country in the world or in Europe is Sweden. So we go in an island in Sweden, the Bergman one, and we were very depressed because nothing was around for a sonic point of view, but it was great for the story because the story was about a group of children. Uh, okay, you can uh, 
um, read it. And in order to enhance this story, it was like a murder story, but very intimate one. It wasn't important to find out who was the murderer. Of course, a plot was there, but it was more interesting to uh, de um, dig in your past okay, and try to find out why you, you are an adult in that way, maybe something go wrong in your, in your childhood, okay? And no NPC was there. There were only PC and two or three of us among them, but we were just planning just other PC, okay? Even the, um, the assassin wasn't clear, even to us, the organizer. We keep it open because we didn't want to um, uh, guide uh, PC through the experience, so we very, very uh, just follow the play. But the problem was how we can move a plot without doing active NPCing. We found out this um, solution based on sound. We record some cassettes, the old one, because we were a child in the 80s, and we try, we, we, we asked to our nephews and uh, son to record with their six, seven years old boys to record some texts. And this cassette were the audio diary of this gang of child um, in the same orphanage. And we dig in, in, the, in, the, in the garden and we buried some cassette. Okay? And every time people find a cassette, we will um, uh, sit all together in circle and press play. And it was very deep and very incredible to see, like we were like 24 people just hearing to this memory. And since this voice wasn't <laughs> a voice from any one of the PC, you had the, car, the, the, the right to say, this was me. Okay? You, came, you, you can embody this voice. Of course, the only difference was between uh, male and female, but there were enough cassettes to enhance the game for everyone. But if you are a boy, you, you, a man, you can say, ah, this boy was me. And the cassette, the audio, told you your own history. So you can use sound as a time machine tool to tell to the PC something that he don't know, okay? And it was a sort of sound, uh, real-time interaction. And of course, this uh, cassette uh, bring story, action, element to this investigation, an element on you. And you can say, yes, now I am. They were very traumatized adult guy. Okay? We, we, we asked to every character to have something wrong in their actual life. And he tried to explain, ah, yes, it's because that, because in the cassette, Bad things happen too, okay? Like I was, uh, people call me pussy every time when I was a child, so now I'm not so self-confident, okay? So in the character you put your actual situation, I'm not very self-confident. And the cassette explains you why. Or you can claim this, um, this audio diary and say, hi, ah, it was me. And not only that, it can actually work on um, uh, relationship during the game because sometimes people bullying me now I'm not self-confident and the other voice in the cassette that was bullying me was you how we can relate now you ruin my life and it was real for every uh, cassette we bury I don't know maybe some cassette are still in Sweden <laughs> and maybe some some someday people will discover it uh, we don't know because we put a lot of that because it was the very very uh, idea of, of of that because sound is very I don't know where I to stop sorry oh it's 11 okay 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 15 minutes is fine so this is uh, how we can use sound. <coughs> so talk in an explicit way. Influence your feeling because of the sound, because of the information, and because you can travel in time and space with sound, as we, 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 we are seeing. And other things that we can do. You can make sound 
a tangible object, okay, by uh, recording support, CD, cassette, USB key, uh, hard disk, whatever you want. <laughs> what is cool in making sound a tangible object is you can very, with this reification, you can really, really play with that. You can hide it, steal it, manipulate it, you can do a lot of things, okay? Some, some, some player in find some cassette in, in this Sweden LARP, Italian Sweden LARP, and, and they manipulated it to erase their name and say, it was me, okay? And player had, had this in every, they were uh, living in, the LARP happened in, uh, um, there, we rent like seven cabin in the hood, so every group was in a cabin, and every cabin has his own tape recorder. And people can use that to manipulate it, okay? And manipulating sound, you manipulate the history and the relationship. So practically, you can put tangible object with sound inside in your lab. Do it, it's very, very rare. I can tell about, mm, on my experience, it's very effective, okay? You can find some sound you can play with. And uh, another thing that you can, okay, that you can do, it can be a workshop, okay? We use sound as a workshop to give information and emotion to the to the PC, okay? We, um, we are running out, well, it's a little spoiled, but no problem. <laughs> we will uh, run a, a LARP in the, uh, and at the end of the April, we already run at this LARP, and this LARP is a post-apocalyptic, so the, the word is end, and the problem for us was how we can explain, without be too long, without write 100 pages, to PC why our world is over. We put, this, um, uh, these stories of how our world is, is finished into an MP3 player. And we give this MP3 player to every character just before going into the game. So, player, to reach the location, have to work one hour, because we were in the, in the, in the Alps, and in these hours, they were all alone in the hood with, the, with these headphones, <coughs> all alone, discovering what is going on, what are your feelings, what you done to survive, okay? And some uh, recording was, um, was different, okay? So not the same story to everyone. You randomly choose your MP3 player before the game, and this is our, your workshop in order to give you information and give you mood, okay? Yeah, and this, and this LARP was um, a community that, that worked on a free radio before the end of the world. So, the, the players spend in, a, in their real life, like one month before the LARP, giving a radio. So they give talk and uh, broadcast and music to give this community. So we use sound as a very long workshop before the game, because I know you in the game. I know you, you were the guy that, um, had this broadcasting, I really love your way to, to, to think, or no, I really despise you, it was not interesting. So it was a sort of pre-game uh, workshop. But of course, it's just one example, you can provide more. So we can use, to sum up, you can use sound to describe a character, to talk in explicit, in explicit ways, so give information, to influence your feeling, of course. This is the more uh, common use of music in LARP and a tangible object, you can uh, exchange it and ruin it and destroy it. Can be a workshop, can be diegetic or extra diegetic, it means in-game or off-game. So you, now we are, um, until now we talk only about sound in the game, but you can use sound out of the game, okay? The music is not there, we can't talk about this music, but the music is there, and we as human beings, we, we feel uh, mood and emotion, and so you can put non-diegetic music and it's fine. Of course, you have to, to explain it to the player before the game, because otherwise it's, oh, what's that sound? Okay, but you can use that. And this is my last question, okay? Can sound be an NPC? Okay, you can use sound as a real NPC. Do you have any answer to this question?
Yes? No? Who think yes? Raise your hand. Who? We all agree. It's fantastic. You're amazing. Yes. Let's give some information, uh, some definition. What are NPC do in your game? A lot of things, but you can. We need to have standard example, of course. Can provide informations, mood, quest, and action. Of course, it really depends on what style of LARP do you want, but more or less. NPC can do one, two, or three, or every one of these points, okay? <laughs> if you add the four points, I will be glad to add, so just speak. As we said, you can give information by sound, the example of the sound cassette. You can influence your mood, which is true for music and other things. And you can enhance quest and action. Why you, we, it's fine to use sound as an NPC? It's for free. <laughs> it's very reliable. <laughs> you can't argue with a cassette. Ah, you were that, that. Okay, so it's very useful. And it's relatively new. So you can add something that people uh, not already done. It's, 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 it's cool because we are um, exploiting a lot of things in LARP, but sound. Not so well. It's raising up, but we can work more on that. Why people uh, keep this aspect um, a little bit in the corner? For several reasons. It's, in some ways, it's expensive, but of course, fortunately, it's less and less expensive. We, can buy, we, we bought um, 85 um, MP3 player for 85 euros. So if you surf on the internet, it's very useful. Of course, it was shit, but it was just for 10 minutes to, to have the idea, okay? So, and, but now with, with this race of technologies, is, it, it, I'm sure it will be more and more common in LARP to work with sound, okay? Uh, audio, audio software are very easy to use and very for free or very uh, easily to reach in every way on the internet. And so this is the reason. But we need to design soundscape. My, my point, my final point, uh, we need to work on sound as we work on props. We are very good on props as LARPer. We, need, we, go, we love good photos and good costumes and it's fine and good location. But maybe, this is a dream, but in the future we will be more effective even in choosing a location for his sound aspect. Not only because it's a good house or a good wood, whatever you want, but going around the location and be silent can be a good exercise for us as LARP designer. And trying to find out if this soundscape, this location, can tell something to us, something that we can put in story. Okay, so a very loud um, uh, ambient can be fine too. Okay, because of, okay, silence is good because it's like a, a white canvas and I can do whatever I want. But even try to, to work with very loud location. We've we done that in this, in this other LARP. Oops. Uh, okay, in this case we were uh, it, it, it was in the, um, in the everyday life in, in, in modern time, in 2015, and we play the new monks of Camelot, people that lost their mind in a way and tried to reconstruct Camelot in Rome, and we play the LARP in a sort of uh, mm, uh, location for rave party. So the struggle was be quiet and meditative while people were dancing and taking drugs and with this enormous sound system, okay? The struggle was between the silence and the sound, okay? And, and it was very important for this life to have this location because we need a very loud location and we find that it was not, not so simple to explain to these people we want to do a LARP during your rave party for five days continuously, they accepted, and it was great. And, okay, for a minute.
What about silence? We talk a lot about sound, but of course, silent can be another design choice. You can put your player in a very silent uh, location and you can force them to be very silent. Of course, if you do that, you need a story or a setting in order to do that, or some meta techniques. I'm sure you can invent dozens of that. But how violent can be the silence? It can be very, very uh, hard okay, to stay silent for one day. Because LARP is very, very logocentric. We talk a lot, every time. Every mood information passes through the sound. But we need to be aware that information thing can pass through the silent too. Usually, the player who remains silent is, okay, these people, this person is not good at role playing, okay? But it's not true. We need to rebalance the thing and find out that silent can be another tool for, the, for, the, uh, for our work as, as sound designer, okay? And this is more or less what I had to say to, um, uh, about sound in, uh, in LARP, okay? So, <clears throat> with, this, with this talk, I don't want to say, ah, you have to do that because your LARP sucks, because you are not very uh, well aware of the role of sound. Not, but just if we become more aware of that, we will really, really improve our techniques. Okay, this is the reason why I didn't, I, I didn't give very technical information about uh, by that or that or that. For this question, the bar is open, I will be there. Come and talk to me, okay? Thank you so much, Wim. Okay. Question? Uh, yeah. Uh, did you try anything uh, where you, like, do a workshop before with, like, the participants to create, like, memories to particular sounds? So they can be used later on in the game? No, it's a good idea. I will steal it. <laughs> <laughs> No, because a lot of things can be done, okay? So this is, this is a good idea. It, it, more or less we've done that with the uh, free radio, but it's not the same yeah. as you say. It's very interesting because, um, because you can, uh, sound is good because it can be embodied or disembodied, okay? It can be part of you or very, something very different and far from you, but you can f force character to and boy, this sound, okay? So this is, this is a good point. You can steal this idea, you too, okay? <laughs> Let, let's share some, some practice. Other questions or remarks or critiques or jokes? I wonder how you get around the problem of things being culturally specific. I mean, one thing I've had in LARP is that, you know, I've been in a LARP where there's like a tune playing and it's meant to be the happy tune. But to me, it's like the fake American tune. <laughs> and, uh, and, and do you know what I mean? It, it, music can put totally different places. And so I wonder how you get around that. Okay. Uh, it, it's really, really hard to answer to because, of course, it's very personal. But maybe you can um, specify that before. Okay? Because we are not very good at describing music. And we, but we are very good at react by our feeling. So uh, Alarp in, in Czech Republic was very, very good. I talked with um, the author, Kamil uh, Buktik, and he said we want to, to make a very uh, romantic and light-hearted story about teenager in love. So uh, if you want to play that Alarp, be prepared to have very cheesy and, and cheap and teenager music, and this music, wh when this music was clearly romantic, you had to kiss the girl or the boy you love. And party music, you have to dance. So in this lab, what was interesting uh, was the, the character had to react very quick, quickly to the information music provided. And the music was diegetic in-game because it was a teenage party and um, a sound system was there with all of the things. Um, so sorry about your experience. No, no, it's, uh, yeah, it's not your fault. Yeah, I wasn't there. Uh, I just remember when you talked about these cassettes that uh, last year uh, there was a 
Swedish role play in the national radio with, with Anna Karin uh, as uh, part of it and, and so on, where they were listening to an old uh, story in a cassette. Okay. Uh, so it uses the cassette as a kind of character inside the radio play. Yeah. It was really interesting when you also went to Sweden roughly the same time. Yeah, it's very, uh, how it's called, uh, is in Swedish, I think. Yeah, but she's here. Ah, okay, okay. Yeah, the, the radio is also very good. So, sometimes we put, um, we don't alarm in the first, uh, no, yeah, first, no, uh, Amano Nera, the first, uh, first um, World War. And uh, we set up a, a, a radio station. So we broadcast from the game master uh, room to the, the location, okay? And we provide information. It was very fun to, for the player because players don't think during the game and the radio give them feedback, okay? And finally, this char the, the character had the chance to stop the first war, uh, world war, but they don't succeed. And the LARP ended with the radio giving the news of Franz Ferdinand being killed, okay? So they act, they do things, and the radio, the game master, without, without being there, give the information about the outcome of the action in the game. And they found that very, uh, very interactive, and they, they enjoy that. They do things just to hear the radio tell the results, okay? And it was a lot of fun. Other question? Yeah, thanks for your talk and brilliant, thanks. inspiring examples. <laughs> yeah. um, I, I wonder, a lot of your, uh, a lot of the examples you're mentioning are already working on a very kind of also also subliminal subliminal level okay. as well as on you know, a narrative level. But I wondered if you worked with uh, using sort of subliminal sound consciously, like a sound that you do not, for instance, like infrasound. Yeah, 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 yeah. You, yeah. But then not sort of cognitive. Yeah, we yeah. yeah we use that. We, the the, the, the lab was set in a in a very modern and Orwellian prison, and um, we put sound maybe for all the LARP. It was a weekend long LARP, and this um, was already there to force prisoner to be quiet and to um, follow the instruction. Okay, so it was it was this kind of of um, of uh, be quiet prison. The night, we sound yeah, the yeah, and in this prison there were a torture room in which if the character act badly during the day, we put this character in the torture room and we torture them only by sound. Okay, so loud sound or confusing sound or just continuous sound and it was very hard. We were very careful and no, nobody get really harmed, but they were very annoyed by that and it, it was the, 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 the point of the game, not be the bad guy because otherwise you will expect that. And it was the, we, we tried uh, in this lab other form of torture <laughs> on the player, uh, you know, with water, not, not very, yeah, <laughs> but uh, but we found out that sound was the more scary one because it was, it was real. Because, you know, put your head in the water for two seconds. It's not, re yeah, it's annoying, but you know that it's just for one minute ah, 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 and it's finished. All the sound is always bzzz. So people were more scared by the sound than other fake torture, of course, because listening to the sound is real. Okay. I think we have to go to the keynote. Thank you for being there. Thank you. Thank you.